Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining me uh, at this ridiculously early time. So, I am currently doing a book project, which means I have to deal with hundreds of citations. Uh, and I have to somehow organize those in such a way that whenever I'm writing the thing that I'm writing, I can find what I need to find, which is kind of the motivation for this talk. Now, this is not the first time I've had to deal with this. When I was a PhD student, of course, I had papers that I was juggling. And let's rewind for a moment and take a look at what I used to do um, so that we can understand what the problems with that were. So, back in the uh, dark times, uh, I had about 40 papers. And because PDF annotations sucked at the time, I actually printed them out. And you can see my handwritten annotations and highlights over there. Um, I had an entire binder full of these. And in order to find the paper that I wanted, I kept an annotated bibliography. That looked like this. I had my citation, and then I had this abstract length summary. Um, you can see an example up here on the right that focused on, this is my own words, my own description of the paper, focused on the things I was interested in and why I thought I might need to use that paper and cite it. Um, and so this worked, um, but it basically came down to a concept where I would take a whole bunch of papers, read them so they were in the forefront of my mind, and then write as fast as possible. Or, as I like to refer to it now, cram and purge. Now, this method is not great. Uh, it has limitations. It requires enough operating memory to fit all of those papers into the forefront of your mind, and it requires that you have uninterrupted time and attention which is a thing that I could apparently achieve as a graduate student and have never achieved in any season of my life since. So, given that, I needed a new way of dealing with things. So I wanted to have something that would let me externalize my memory so that I don't have to keep all of the details of everything in my mind. Something that I would only have to load a limited amount of information to get started, so I don't have a big like, build-up time when I'm going to sit down and work and something where I could discretize the tasks for when either I'm going to be operating, maybe I have 20 minutes to work, um, or I know that uh, I'm going to be interrupted at any moment by a small child requiring my attention. So I'm going to show you what it is that I do now. But before I start telling you the names of tools and software and things like that, I want to emphasize a very important point, which is that what's important here is the process and not the tools. You can go out today and you can download this software and it will not make you any better at dealing with this problem <laughs> in your own work. Uh, what's really required is thinking about how you're going to go about doing this and how you're going to implement um, concepts that are going to help you do this. So a few terms that will come up or that may be useful if you want to look for papers that um, talk about how these educational methods are useful. Um, distillation is one of the concepts I'm going to talk about. This is basically rephrasing stuff in my own way. Spaced repetition is the idea of coming back to things repeatedly, kind of think back to flashcards. Um, and progressive summarization is a method that I use to kind of make every note um, more helpful every time I touch it. Um, you, there are research papers and, and, and resources on these things. I am not going to go over them right now because we got limited time. So let's take a closer look. And this is where I take a chance and I jump over to Zotero. Yeah. So many of you will probably be aware of Zotero. It's known as a citation manager. This is kind of where I do my capture and my first pass of things. Uh, so you can see my library over on the left, and I've actually structured it out with all of the different chapters of my book and subfolders for the different topics that I think I'm going to cover. And so anytime I find a paper in my daily life going around writing FYFD that I think is going to be useful for the book, I have a place that I can put it. I don't have to read it right now, but I have a place where I can go and I can find it. Sometimes if I'm feeling really good, I will use tags to tell myself whether I've read the paper or not. Um, but whenever I have time, I sit down and I read a paper like this one, and I do, once again, the highlighting. And you'll notice every single one of these also has an annotation. So typically when I highlight something, I will also annotate it to rephrase it in my own words, 
to make notes of ideas that come to me, whether I'm like, hmm, this doesn't have a citation, I want to look for this, or hey, I want to make sure I read that other citation at some point, etc. I kind of try to leave myself, my future self, breadcrumbs, essentially, as to why I thought this was important and why I think it's going to be relevant. And after I've made it all the way through the paper, this is a nice short one, um, it lives in Zotero, that's not really helpful to me. I would still need to be able to say, which paper was it that had the cookie dunking physics? So I take it out of Zotero and I switch to Obsidian. <laughs> so over here on the left is what I refer to as a literature note. Uh, this is for the exact same paper that you just saw. I've got my citation information. I've got that summary that I talked about before where I write about the paper in my own words, kind of highlighting what I think is gonna be important. And then I actually have all of my highlights and commentary from the paper reworked slightly as I go through it a second time. Um, and the, not that this detail is important, but most of this information gets dumped over by an automatic process that I have set up, and then I go through and format it, um, which is helpful because one of the things that I can do, Obsidian uses a thing called Markdown, I can actually make all of my equations look nice in it, which is wonderful. Once again, though, this is still requiring me to know what paper this was about. So I also have this lovely note, which is the key to everything in my life right now, which is, again, an outline of my paper, or my book, rather. And so I have a cookie dunking physics article. And every time I read a paper about cookie dunking physics, I put that reference here, along with a short one sentence description of what that paper was about. And as I go deeper into topics, I collect more papers, and I sometimes go back to those papers, and I end up highlighting for myself what the key ideas of the paper are. So now I can easily scan through this article and see exactly what the most important things out of it are anytime I need to touch it. And I continue expanding my topics until I'm ready to write. And at this point, Rather than having my huge list of articles, which I still link at the bottom, um, I go through and I pull out those useful annotations and I put them in different topics. So let's say I'm, I have this up next to me while I'm writing. I see to myself, oh, I need to know something about how the rafts stay afloat. Here's my quotes about that. It's right there. Let's say, nah, I'm not quite sure which, which paper did that come from. I hit a link. Boom, I'm back to the literature article for that paper. And I say, ah, oh, you know, I would really like some more context to this. I hit this link right here. Boom, I'm back in Zotero. I'm at my original annotation, and I can read all of the stuff around it at my leisure. Or I can just operate on the breadcrumbs that I've left myself. So that is kind of the overarching idea of how I have this set up. As you can see, it's kind of a, like, start big, go down, uh, to only have a short, um, a small amount of stuff that I have to deal with, but leave myself breadcrumbs so that I can expand back out if needed. So, what's great about this is that I can handle interruptions. At any point in this process, I can get interrupted and I can find my way back to the things that I need. Um, I'm always having a chance to retouch things, to distill them, to make it so that it makes more sense for me in my mind, and that I have left breadcrumbs so I can easily jump back to the full details when I need to. Um, so it's incredibly useful for those moments when I'm like, I need a little bit more, um, but it's also really useful for not getting bogged down in that stuff when I'm ready to go. So, useful resources. These are a few uh, that have been handy to me as I've been putting this together. And I don't want you to think that this is the only way that you can do this. Everybody is going to have their own version of this. These are just some things that I have found useful in making the version that you just saw. Um, Zotero and Obsidian are the two main software things. Uh, the others are actually books. Uh, they fall into the category of personal knowledge management, or PKM, for those of you who want to get real nerdy about it. Um, and <laughs> You can find more about this and lots of other useful tips at my uh, science communication blog. 
And if you missed part of this, or you think this would be helpful for uh, replay or for your colleagues, I am planning on making a version of this and putting it on YouTube. I will put it on this blog when I'm done. Any questions? <laughs>